Okay, so now we're going to have a look at second order reactions. And from what we know from our previous learnings is that rate is equal to negative delta A over delta T is equal to Ka squared. The two tells us that it is second order. If we integrate this expression, we now get the integrated rate law as 1 over A at time T is equal to Kt plus 1 over A0. If you have a look again, this was rearranged in the form to give us y equals mx plus b, where y is equal to 1 over A at time t, and k is our slope, and 1 over A0 is our y-intercept. So if you were to plot 1 over A at t, use that as your y versus t as your x on your horizontal axis, that will give us a straight line with a slope of positive k this time, and the intercept will be 1 over A0. So one thing to note here is that for a second order reaction, a plot of line of A at T versus T would not give us a straight line. It, the, the, it would not be linear. So also another thing to note is that a second order process can have this form of an expression, but in terms of ease of simplicity of math, we kept it as A squared. So, for instance, you'll probably face a lot of questions where they'll ask you to graph, and you'll have varying concentrations of whatever reactant you're interested in looking at, and you'll have to figure out whether it is actually a first order or a second order. So, what you could do is if you have all your concentrations given to you in the table, and then you take the line of the concentration versus the same time, and then you go to graph it, and if you happen to notice that you still get a curve, that should tell you right away that it is not first order. If then you were to take the concentration of your reactant and do the inverse value, and then you plot the inverse value versus time, and that should give you a straight line, then you know for sure that it is a second order reaction. Okay, so let's look at an example of using second order integrated rate law expression. So let's look at this problem. Let's consider again the decomposition of nitrogen dioxide discussed above. The reaction is second order in nitrogen dioxide with K rate constant equal to 0.43 per molar per second. Another thing to notice here are the units. The units for a first order rate constant would be per second. The units for a second order rate constant are per molar per second. That's also another clue to look at if you're trying to figure out whether you have first order or second order. Okay, so if the initial concentration of nitrogen dioxide in a closed vessel is 0 0.0500 molar, what is the remaining concentration after half an hour? So I wrote out what's actually given to us. We are given the rate constant, 0.543 per molar per second. Time is half an hour. We're given A0, the initial concentration of NO2. So we could just write, instead of A, we just write NO2. I write A in for simplicity, but it means the exact same thing. So the initial concentration of NO2 is 0 0.0500 molar. And we are asked, what is the concentration of NO2 after half an hour. So we're going to use the second order integrated rate expression in order to figure this out. And the first thing that we have to do is we notice that we are given time in units of hours, but our rate constant was in units per second. So the first thing that we have to do in order to tackle this problem, we have to convert half an hour to seconds so we multiply by 60 minutes per hour times 60 seconds per minute. We cross out the units until we get seconds, 1800 seconds, and we plug that in into our rate expression. What we end up getting is 997.4 per molar, but then you have to remember that this is 1 over A at T, which is the same thing as 1 over X, and what we're asked to find is X. So we have to take the inverse of this value. So in order to give us A at time T, we have to take the inverse of 1 over A at time T, which gives us 
approximately 1 times 10 to the negative 3.